All right, what's up? Uh, today I want to talk to you about this game called the Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Uh, this game is not stream worthy, as you will soon see, but I do, uh, I'm currently, at least for the, the time being, playing it. So I did want to talk about it, and I feel like I can say everything there is to say in a short video uh, without having to make something longer. And then you can decide for yourself if it's something you want to uh, waste your time on <laughs> or not. Uh, so Idle Champions of Forgotten Realms uh, is a do-nothing candy box game. Uh, and we call it candy box, but uh, people on the internet call it uh, various other things. You know, idle games or uh, incremental games. Uh, the reason we call it candy box is because the first time we sort of understood this phenomenon was from a game that was literally called Candy Box. So let's let's take a look at Candy Box itself. A little web browser here. Uh, and just Google for Candy Box. And you'll see here this link here. All right. So here's Candy Box. Uh, Candy Box is a game that is running 100% JavaScript. So if you want to, you can just cheat, open up your console, and, and cheat at this game by typing in some JavaScript. But assuming you don't cheat, the way the game works is you're getting one candy here, right? Every, I'll make it a little bit bigger here. Uh, you're getting one candy every second, right? Just by doing nothing. It's a do nothing game. Uh, and then there are actions that you can do uh, based on how many candies you have. You'll notice that since I just got 60 candies, uh, I have a new action available to me, which is buy a lollipop. So I did, right? And now I can't really, I can throw candies on the ground. I can eat my candies, right? But I can't really do anything else. Uh, and the way you progress in this game is by literally doing nothing and waiting for enough candies. And if you wait for enough candies, more and more actions become available to you over time. Uh, so it's really just a waiting game, right? And there are many, many games that follow this exact same pattern. Uh, the first one I ever saw was called Progress Quest. Uh, Progress Quest is a desktop game, but you can play it online in your browser. And in Progress Quest, you roll here. They, they simulate it online with this thing that looks like Windows 95. It's pretty awesome. XP, XP. Anyway, um, you create a DD and d character. Let's be a, a double Wookiee, because I saw Star Wars today. Uh, a double Wookiee with, who is, uh, let's see, what class? Let's just go with Tickle Mimic. <laughs> roll some stats. Uh, we should have taken the 80 that we got before. I mean, it doesn't matter because I'm not actually playing. We'll take the crappy stats. Okay, and here's Progress Quest. So in Progress Quest, is literally a game where you do nothing ever, right? Uh, it, you, it's basically a screensaver. <laughs> um, but look, you're experiencing an enigmatic and foreboding night vision. Much is revealed about what the old bastard you'd underestimate, right? Things are, things are happening in the story, and here's your character's equipment. Your inventory, your quests, your spell book, your stats, right? You have this D and effectively a D&D &D character, an RP, a tabletop RPG character. And over time, by doing nothing, I had a progress crust once that lasted quite a while. These boxes begin to fill up. But as a player, you make no decisions whatsoever. Uh, so this gameplay style has evolved over time. Uh, and there became Cookie Clicker, right? Cookie Clicker is another do-nothing game. You may have seen this. So the cookie clicker works is, uh, yeah, I got it. Um, you click the cookie, right? So now you actually have to do something. You have to click. And as you click, right, eventually you can buy other things. I bought a cursor, right? That cursor, I think, should be improving my clicking rate. Right? So you, right, I can buy some other things here. Eventually, ooh, we can even sell. Okay, so here's the Kirk co cookers. So e 0.3 cookies per second. So basically, you're clicking and buying things. But over time, uh, you are increasing the rate of the do nothing, right? So even though you might do some clicking to start the game, right, eventually this becomes a do-nothing game. Right? Uh, but there is something to do, which is that you sort of have to like tend to the garden, right? In that 
even though I'm now getting cookies for doing nothing, see, just like the candy box where I got candies for doing nothing, uh, I have to spend these cookies on stuff, right? And as I get these stuffs over here, right, this, the rate of cookie making improves, but then the number of cookies I need to get more stuff increases dramatically. So basically, it, it is a waiting game with this clicking element at the start, right? Uh, and another game very similar to this uh, you can get for free is called Adventure Capitalist. Very, very similar, same, same idea. So, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Let's go to that. All right, so this is Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, right? It starts you off uh, on a map here, uh, and you can see it's definitely the Forgotten Realms. This is an official D&D licensed game. Uh, and you can see that there are different uh, campaigns, right? There's a Grand Tour of the Sword Coast and Tomb of Annihilation, I guess, is down here with different adventures that are separate. Uh, and I've currently got two places I can go. I could go to uh, here, a brief tour of the realms. This is like the, the tutorial area. Uh, and then down here is Neverwinter Wood. And I don't know if you can go anywhere else yet because I've not made it not a lot unlocked anything other than Neverwinter Wood. Uh, so you go into Neverwinter Wood, and here are different missions that can be gone on. And uh, they have different difficulties. Uh, you know, the ones with the green check have been completed. And you'll see the sort of, you know, all of the ones grouped under the Cursed Farmer. See, there are some that were completed, right? See, like, the Cursed Chick and the Mad Cow Disease, all right, these are all, you know, the same place as the Cursed Farmer, right? All different things to do in the same part of town, because these are all in the same Sword Mountain whatever area. Uh, oh, I have to click here. Uh, and then each each area, each part of town has a free play, right? And you're going to be doing a lot of the free play. <laughs> um, all right, and you can see this one, uh, it says difficulty fair, but I actually haven't beaten it yet. That's why there's no check mark next to it. But as soon as I do this, more of these little ones will open up underneath it. Anyway, so let's go to this free play. Uh, just to show you how the game works. Uh, so you'll see each mission has a, a, a thing you need. So, so it's it's not a free play mission, then there's some sort of goal, some objective. And when you complete the objective, you get some rewards, right? Some usually gems, right? And some number of favor. Uh, and there's different favor for each of these different areas, right? So this is the Sword Coast has one kind of favor, the this favor. And if we go to Tomb of Annihilation, which I haven't done any missions here yet, you'll see that I have zero favor in this in this area. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so the free play missions do not have any reward other than favor. I notice each, all these areas have the same formations mostly, uh, but there are, when you go to different places, sometimes the formations are different. Anyway, so we'll go start the game now, finally. All right, so you have a hero. Uh, you always start with the bar, the the uh, Bruinor, the dwarf, right? And Bruinor, the dwarf, uh, will automatically kill enemies for you. Uh, you can click on them if you want, just like Cookie Clicker. But I'm actually leveled up enough to the point where uh, I don't need to do any clicking, right? If you were to start uh, a brand new game, you would have to click on some enemies to get enough gold to get stuff going to the point where you could play without trying. All right, so up here in the top right, you've got the sort of mission progression, right? So in order to, this is free play, but if it weren't, you'd see the objectives here, right? You can see the map brings us back here, if you want to look at it. We're currently in area number one, and, you know, if you, sometimes they're like, oh, you have to get to area some number in order to beat this, right? And in order to get to number two, right, we have to defeat 25 monsters, so he's, Bruinor here is chopping up these little uh, wolf pups, right? Once he chops up uh, six more, we will move on to number two, which is currently locked, right? Any unlocked area, you can t just switch to, right? As much as you want. So if you've got, if you're at level 100, you can go to one, two, 10, 50, 100, doesn't matter. You can just move anywhere you want as long as you've, you know, up to the places you've beaten. You notice I'm picking up gold with my mouse? You don't have to do that. Uh, that's just happening because I'm moving my mouse around. Uh, that is not necessary. You can literally do nothing uh, while playing this game. Uh, right, you can also increase the damage of your click. 
right? This is the upgrading area. This is where actually you're gonna be spending most of your time. Um, so down here, you can increase the damage of your click, right? You spend this gold that you're collecting to uh, you know, upgrade your dudes, right? So you notice his Bruinor, the dwarf, he's always there. He starts at level one always. But here's the other heroes, right? And sometimes when they have special events, you can get different heroes. So look, I can swap. Instead, I can use this hero or I can use Grama, right? So there's Grama, the female turtle druid, or Nayeli, the female human paladin. And in this slot, I can have Calliope, the half-elf bard, or Dadius, I think he's a human wizard of some kind. Anyway, uh, I'm going to keep these guys. Uh, you notice I have this formation, right? So I can put Bruinor the Dwarf in any of these spots I want to, right? And you also notice I've only got one, two, three, I've only got nine spots, right? So let's spend our gold and bring the other heroes into play here, right? And notice not only are we paying to bring the hero into play, we're also going to upgrade them, right? We spend the gold to level them up, right? So now... Uh, you know, Celeste here is at level 90, because I spent a bunch of gold. Right? Spend, 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 spend. Oh, okay. So I've got uh, enough levels for Bruinor here that I can now... Ch everyone gets this once, right? To choose what their special uh, upgrade path is going to be. So I've basically discovered each character has a correct path, which is to increase damage. <laughs> Increasing damage is what you want to do. That's like increasing cookies and cookie clicker. Right, uh, so this one, I have a choice between he focuses on increasing his own damage, increase the effect of his inspired ability by 200%, or increase his rally ability by 100%. His rally ability increased damage of those in the same column as him, so increasing that by 100 is increasing two multiple heroes by 100, as opposed to just Bruinor by 200. This is way better, All right? And now you can see Bruinor has his arrow coming out of him that shows his boost, his buff, which means he's going to buff anyone in the same column, right? You can see as I move the heroes around, uh, see the, you can see they're buffing arrows, right? Buffs people behind, buffs people adjacent, right? Get you in there, right? And you can move them around. Here's the current formation total DPS up here. You just move people around until you get the highest uh, DPS you can with the heroes you've got, right? Uh, so... Even though it's a do-nothing game, this game has this little bit of stuff you have to do here, which is choose your heroes, right, that you want to spend money on. You'll notice I didn't spend any, I didn't even bring in, uh, what's this guy's name? Jarlaxle, the, uh, the, the rogue drow, right? Because Jarlaxle doesn't really help um, the party that much. <laughs> he kind of sucks. Uh, all of his abilities help himself and no one else. And he only good if he stands in front and he just backstabs. So, like, he does something. But basically, you're only getting nine heroes here. And as this goes on, you'll see more heroes appear. Uh, there are nine heroes and better than Jarlaxle. So, screw Jarlaxle. I ain't spending money on him. Right? Okay. So, another thing you might notice is that I'm, I'm, I've chosen up G here. Right? So, you can give them one level at a time if you want to. But that kind of sucks. Uh, all right, you can give him 10 or 25 or 100 levels at a time. That sucks. Up G means enough levels. See, this little box here is an upgrade, right? And that is like a significant change to the character, right? So when Bruinor hits level uh, 200, he will increase the damage of himself by 100%. In addition to gaining 20, the bonuses of gaining 20 levels, he'll also gain this other bonus. So by choosing up G over here, right? Uh... I'm basically saying when I click this once, level up enough times to get an upgrade, right? Oh, we got another one here. So this is between healing, healing doesn't matter, right? Increase damage of those around her. Yes, please. Damage, right? Because damaging determines are you going to be able to beat these monsters? Not, there's no monsters you're going to beat with healing, right? If you just try to sit and heal, you're not going to be able to beat monsters. They're just going to come on you and you're not going to damage them enough. Because their hit points and strength increases exponentially. So if you want to reach a high stage here, a, hard, a, lot, a large number, you're going to need more DPS. Right? That's all that matters. Oh, we got another uh, hero into the fray here.
121. That's better, right? Figured out a uh, better layout here. Cool. All right. Um, all right, so let's go through the other things that are going on. So you'll notice these, as you level up the heroes, they unlock their ultimate abilities, right? So here's the un ultimate ability of Bruinor, ultimate ability of Celeste, and ultimate ability of Nayeli. As I level up these other heroes, they will also unlock their ultimate abilities. When you click on the ultimate ability, the character will go, Rah! do their ultimate thing. Yeah, Bruinor, look at him doing the super smash, right? Really, you want to save that for the bosses, because every five levels, there's a boss, uh, and the bosses are super dangerous, and that's usually what's going to stop you. Usually, you're strong enough to beat the regular guys, and then the boss comes along and you can't beat him, right? And you need to you need to maybe click the special abilities that'll let you beat the boss. Then they have a cooldown, uh, and you'll be able, even though you had to use the special abilities to beat the boss, you'll beat the next few normal levels, and then there'll be another boss that'll probably be unbeatable, <laughs> uh, at least without leveling up some more. All right. So you're playing this game. You're doing nothing. You're getting some gold. You're upgrading your people, you're arranging the formation to get the highest DPS, right? Uh, what else is going on in this game? Well, there is a Forgotten Realms D&D &D plot, if you pay attention. If you've really got nothing better to do with your life, see, I can just click on this crow here. You can click on these things in the background um, to give you some extra gold. Notice that little rock there was, uh, was shaking. I clicked it, and I got a bunch of gold that came out of it. So it's like you get slight bonuses for paying attention to the game as opposed to just letting it run in the background. But it's not enough that it's worth time in your life uh, to do this. Right? So let's continue. Right? There's a shop in this game. Right? Now, some things in the shop cost gems, green gems, and some things in the shop cost real money. Do not spend real money on this game. Are you crazy? It is a do-nothing game. Right? This would be, I mean, I see people spending money on games, uh, but this is literally the worst. If you, were, I mean, if you spend money on skins, that's one thing. It's like a multiplayer game. People are seeing your skins or whatever, right? You spend game, uh, money on a pay-to-win game. All right, well, that's evil, but at least you're paying to win, right? You're getting something for your money, I guess. Here, you are literally paying money to get more cookies per second in the, in the cookie game, which you also get by waiting and doing nothing. Why would you spend money? Oh my god. Do not give these people a dime. Holy crap. Uh, and they're always enticing you like, oh, give us money. We'll give you this many notched axe. It's like, no, do not give them money. All right, so uh, you get gems for beating bosses, right? So every time you beat a boss, you notice earlier a bag of gems came out. Um, and then you can use those gems to buy either silver chests or golden chests, right? Golden chests greater than one cost real money. But you can always get a single golden chest for 500 gems. Uh, silver chests are cheap, and you can only get them with gems. Uh, you can also just get them randomly, right? Sometimes you beat a boss, and a silver chest just pops out. It's like, hell yeah! Awesome, right? So I recommend never buy a silver chest with gems, only buy golden chests with gems. And basically what the deal is, silver chests have weak equipment and gold chests have awesome equipment, right? So let's open up. I got a gold chest here. Let's open it up. Pew! It has cards. Even though they're cards, they're not actually cards, right? And you see I got equipment here. Some equipment like these items, the bounty contract and the potion, are usable items. And the rest are equipment. Uh, this is an equipment I didn't have already that increased uh, Jamila's uh, damage by 125%. That's good. These are equipments I already had. So you notice that even though I already have a Mithril Helm and a well-used axe for Bruinor here, uh, the effect of those items has now been increased by a very, very small, some not significant percentage, but it could add up over time, so it's not completely wasted. All right? The silver chest, I am going to open this now, but... Usually you want to open them when you're when you've sort of reached your limit, right? See, I'm nowhere near my limit. I'm only level nine, but I'm sort of reached the very high numbers, and like I can't really progress further. That's when you want to use the silver chest, because here, let's open it anyway. The silver chest usually contains gold, right? Just gold. That's like a whole bunch of cookies in one big shot. And if you use it in a later level, it, the amount of gold scales accordingly. Right? I would have gotten a lot more gold using this in level 100 than in level 5. 
So don't want to, you know, I, I didn't want to do this, but I did just to demonstrate that that, that was in, it's just a silver chest, not a big deal. Uh, and I got another piece of equipment here, but notice there's only three items in a silver chest as opposed to five that were in the gold chest, and the equipment is lower quality. You're not going to get rare and epic stuff, right? So the equipment that you've gotten uh, goes down here, and you can see hovering over the each character, right, uh, has the equipment that they've gotten. The equipment is more gems from the boss. Um, the equipment is the only true leveling up that happens in this game, right? The equipment is really the only way to get... That's why it costs money. Everything else is sort of just wait and do nothing. The equipment costs real money uh, because this is the only way to actually get stronger and further in the game. Right? It's the only sort of permanent thing that carries over to all the different campaigns and all the different missions. You know, it's the only permanent strength boost that really counts. So you can see that I got some purple equipments. I don't know if there's any orange equipments, but, you know, I think it's clear, then... I don't know if blue or green is better. I think it's clear, green, blue, and then purple is the best. Uh, at least purple's the strongest I've seen, right? Look at that. Purple increases the damage of all champions by 230.46%. So maybe the 0.46 is because I've gotten this item more than once. I'm guessing. Move some characters around here. Oops. You go there. You go there. Yeah. So this is um, this is my favorite guy. This is Minsk, all right? The human uh, ranger. All right? He's kind of good. <laughs> I don't know if that matters. He is really, really strong. His DPS alone is the strongest. So I surround him with you know buffing, right? Buff, buffing, 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 and then. Eventually, this character will uh, here choose the human bond because I have mostly humans here, right? Human, 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 human uh, is now buffing all humans no matter where they stand, right? So Minsk is getting a buff from everybody in that position, and he swings his sword, whoosh, 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 big, big long sword there, uh, and it does an AOE damage to all the bad guys. And basically, in later levels, you'll see what will happen is everyone goes out to attack and doesn't really do much. And then when Minsk goes out and swings his sword, the bad guy dies. Like, all their whole hit points in one shot. So it's all that's my strategy, is to buff Minsk as much as possible. And it seems to be working pretty well. I'm down with this strategy. Okay, so we talked about equipments being the only permanent buff. You get them from chests, right? We talked about the one-shot uh, things. Here. I was talking about the... All right, so items that you can use in one shot. You, here's the inventory is the gems I've collected. I'm waiting to get 500 gems so that I can buy another golden chest. Uh, here's potions of strength. Increase the damage of all champions, right? So strength potions uh, increase your total party's damage for a, a temporary amount of time. So when you would want to use these is if you're getting close to the end, you're, all, you're doing one of the, not a free play, but one of the missions with a goal, and you need to reach like level 100 or something, and you're level 90, and it's getting a little tough, and you just can't get to level 100, just finish this mission, one of these things, or, or a few of them, will just let your party just get through those last few levels uh, by giving them a huge boost. Uh, and that's when you would use these. Uh, here's the Potions of Clairvoyance, right? Increases your gold found uh, by a large percentage. Right? So these come in different shapes and sizes, but anything that increases your gold find, you also want to use like at the very, very end of a run, right? When you've reached your limit, you, you're, not getting, you know, you're not getting enough levels and stuff. You can't beat more bad guys. They're certainly gang up on you. Use one of these to collect as much gold as possible from, that, from those levels, and then you'll be done. Uh, this, these potions, the ones that increase the power of clicking, right? See, clicking at this point, you'll see, does like nothing, basically. Right. Uh, I, those are dying from my, my heroes shooting them, not, not from my clicks. Yeah, see, my clicks are doing nothing. Um, even if you level up your clicks, I've found that they don't do enough damage to be significant. Right. So basically, at this point, it is just a waiting game. There's no more clicking uh, to be worthwhile. But the clicking potions say they cause your clicks to do at least 4% of a monster's max health, or sometimes 2% is a large potion, so it's 4%. But no matter how big or dangerous a bad guy is, no matter how badass a boss it is, one click doing 4% means f what's 100 divided by 4. Like, I don't know, let's see, 4 into 80, you know, 4 into 40 is 10, so 4 into 80 is 20, and then to get 20 more, 
would be 25, so like 25 to 30 clicks, right? Uh, you are going to be able to kill anything, any bad guy, in 25 to 30 clicks. So you would use those when you can beat everything except a boss. There's just a boss of one one bad guy. You can't beat him, right? You, if if you do beat him, it'll be a significant completion of a mission, uh, and just want to get it over with. So then you would use any of any. It doesn't really matter if it's large or small. Large just makes it less clicks. Uh, they all last long enough so that you then click on that boss and the boss dies, and you're good with that. Um, as Persons of Heroism, increase the health. I haven't really noticed these helping that much. I guess the only times, you know, it's like if you're in trouble from health, if like you notice bad guys aren't even reaching us here, right? Let me level up here. Oop, more, more boosty things. Okay. Oh no, did the game crash? Alright, so... <laughs> this game does is actually still early access, and I won't lie, uh, it does crash often. So uh, be careful of that. Uh, uh, at least it saves itself very often, so you don't have to worry about losing a lot of progress. Um, okay. Yeah, see here they put ads in the game trying to make you spend money. Nope, nope, nope. Not giving you any money. This thing here is also a temporary event where these three characters are getting boosted. Uh, slightly, but I mean, you don't have to do anything and just ignore that, right? Especially since I'm not using these two characters, because even with these boosts, they're not that good. Um, right. But anyway, uh, so, what was I saying? Alright, upgraded our guys, and... Oh, right, the health bonuses, right? Sure. <laughs> okay, so you'll notice we're not, none of these bad guys are actually reaching us. We're not taking a single hit point of damage. If you're at the point where bad guys are reaching you and damaging you, you're just about done uh, on that run. Uh, and adding health isn't really going to help you get further, right? Uh, it's not going to help. It's not going to like give you the edge you need to go longer. All it's going to do is mean your guys will stand there for another 30 seconds and then die. <laughs> right? If you can't do enough damage to beat the bad guys, you can't. You have to be able to kill them before they reach here and start touching and attacking you. Otherwise, you're not going to beat that level. All right? You're, it's time to go. All right, so, as the shop, all right, achievements. So there's this achievements menu. I ignore this because I just let it happen naturally, but there are certain things that if you do and complete them, they will usually increase the damage of all champions by 1%. So these are permanent upgrades that actually are meaningful. Uh, so you can try to do some of them. Have Mince kill 15 or enemies in one ultimate attack. All right, I can do that. You know, it's like I have to think about this and like try to do it intentionally the next time there's a big clump of enemies. Um, right? Uh, I guess I could like intentionally like put everyone, take all, everyone in the party out except Minsk and then wait for enough bad guys to come in a clump and then have him use his special ability. It's like, this is, a, you know, this is not really worth paying attention to, but, you know, doing these things will increase your, like, how, look how many I've got. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, that one counts as five, so that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Like, 20, 30 to 40, you know, you could probably increase the damage of all champions by, like, 50 to 100% if you did all of those. All right? So those, those are, you know, they're not insignificant. His collections, so you can see all of the items that you've collected in case you've, you know, because you're only looking at the current ones down here, right? So I guess you could, you could change items maybe, or, uh, you know, whatnot. I never, I never looked at this ever, actually. <laughs> all right, his chests, it shows, is the, basically the same screen as the shop. All right, so here are blessings. All right, so before we talk about blessings, though, we have to talk about favor, right? Oh, here's the journal with the plot in it, if you want to reread the plot. Because you're not, because re you're you're letting this run while you're not even looking at the screen. So if you want to know about the plot, you usually have to read it in the journal. Anyway, so here's the complete adventure button. This is the what I'm talking about when I say end a run, right? So if you're not in free play, then there's a reward for reaching a certain level, right? It'll say, "Aha, reach level 25, and we will give you 100 gems." In which case, all you want to do is reach level 25 and then complete your adventure to get those gems. 
right? Gems give you chests, which give you items, which are the only real upgrades in this game. Um, uh, so anything that can let you collect gems is good, right? Collecting gold doesn't actually improve anything. All it does is help you on this run, right? Because every run, you when you restart, you're starting with zero gold. The gold is spent to level up. You go back to level one at the start of a run, right? These aren't permanent things. The equipment is a permanent boost that carries over, right? So gems are really what you want, not gold, right? But anyway, when you complete an adventure, uh, you get some favor for the area you're in, right? We're getting Torm's favor because that's the area that we're in. The, the tomb area, the other one, gives you a different kind of favor. So that favor that you get does two things. One, it increases your percentage of gold found, right? So when you start and you have zero favor, even just getting one level for Bruinor sucks because, like, even, you'll get to level, you know, you'll be in stage one, stage two, you'll be moving along, but you're, like, you're not getting enough gold from the bad guys to actually buy levels for these characters, right? You'll notice it's only level 24, but I've already got Minsk, and I could get uh, Delina if I wanted to, right? Nor, like, the, when you run through this without favor to increase your gold find, you're not getting Delina until, like, you know, way deeper in, right? Uh, which means you have to do a lot more paying attention uh, to things, right, to, to get your progress. Progress is a lot slower, right? You know, it takes longer to do a single run when you have less favor. The other thing favor does, as I said before, is let you get blessings, right? So see, the different kind of favors, right? Uh, I got the Torm's favor. These are favors from special events that I already cashed in because they're, they're temporary, so you just cash them in to get the favor you really want. See, I cashed them in to get Torm's favor. Uh, so you can spend the Torm's Favor, which would decrease your gold find, by the way. But what it gets you are these other better permanent bonuses, right? So look, I've increased the damage of all champions by, what, plus 500% here by getting extra training a whole bunch of times, you know, uh, by spending enough, you know, favor. That's way better than what the favor was, just getting me gold. This is getting me increased damage of all champions. Reduce cooldown of champions' base attack by... 0.25 seconds, right? Increase Torm's favor earned from recess. So actually, I'm increasing my fa spending favor to get more favor increased rate later, right? So when you click on one of these, you know, I leave the warnings enabled. It'll say, are you sure you want to spend that much favor? Because that is a large chunk of my favor. I've only got less than 10 million favors, like a 9 million. So spending 256,000, that's a lot of favors, right? Uh, but if it's a if it's cheap enough, it won't warn you, and that it's sort of helpful, right? It's like ah yes, it is worth it for you to spend that favor on that right now, right? Um, so then once I completed all this, you can get these bonuses on the right. Look, all championship damage times two over all campaigns. So even though I'm spending Torm's favor to get this, this will actually help me in the other campaigns that are not Torm, uh, and eventually, right? I can get all. Um, there might even be more tiers after tier three. But, you know, eventually, you know, you unlike a whole bunch of these, and this really uh, levels up your team, right, in a permanent way, just like the, um, the equipment, right? So, yeah, that's basically what we got going on here, is you, you set it up, right? You click on upgrade a whole bunch of times. You figure out your formations and which uh, upgrades you're going to choose. You don't have to pick up the gold. I'm just doing that reflexively. You can save your formations here. Uh, you know, so that you don't have to remember them and such. And basically what you want to do is let the game run, you know, level yourself up enough, you don't have to pay attention. You'll beat a whole bunch of bosses and collect a whole bunch of gems. Look, we're already at 161 gems here. Uh, I think we're at 100 before, right? We got 60 gems just waiting because that's how many bosses we've killed. What, five, five bosses going on six? Um, and once you've got enough gems, buy the gold chest, right? If you get to a point, you know, level 100, level whatever it is, based on your current, you know, abilities, where you're not progressing, right? You're not, you're not just sliding through beating bosses. That means you're not collecting gems, right? You're sitting there grinding out like one level really hard. It's like instead of grinding out that one level, you could have just reset and grab and go whoosh right through a whole bunch of levels and gotten a huge pile of gems. So as soon as the going gets tough, reset, get your favor. You know, spend your gems on chests, use gold chests when, as soon as you get them, use silver chests, uh, and 
other things like at the end um you know at the end of a, a, a mission when the going gets tough also right before you reset use any silver chests also you're going to get the these uh, bounty contracts i forgot to talk about bounty contracts give you a pile of gold also so you know gold becomes favor i don't think i mentioned that <laughs> the amount of gold you've got in total uh on a run determines how much favor you're going to get when you reset right so you want to using these bounty contracts it gives you 30 minutes of offline gold earnings right um using bounty contracts and silver chests gives you gold right relative to where you're at so use those at the end of runs right before resetting to get the most gold and the most favor uh and max that biz out oh we got another guy demon guy yeah he goes there go oh, in the back right okay so yeah this is a do nothing game that can occupy your time uh you can waste your time doing this if you want do not spend any real world money on this not a dime um, don't even play this at all if you don't want to spend your time on it. But the thing I, I think that this p puts this slightly ahead of other candy box games uh, is that there is some minute amount of decision making that is made, right? You figure out these formations, you figure out which characters you want, right? There is this little bit of thinking to it uh that goes on that the other candy box games don't have and those you literally just click and wait and do nothing All right look i had to choose which you know favorite enemy i was going to pick for a minsk right on this run i haven't found it to really matter so i just pick based on uh, the theme of the the mission <laughs> i think in this one we're fighting goblins so i chose humanoid um and yeah uh this has a a, a plot actually a forgotten realms plot that you can read it's an official DD thing uh so that's pretty cool and you it has an offline right so if i close this game which i'm not going to do right now but if you close this game uh and then come back to it later and open it up it'll say hey while you were offline you earned this much gold right here's a huge pile of gold for you all right so you don't need to keep this open and running all the time you can just open it grind out gems the thing is you're not getting gems when you're offline you're only getting gold but you know you don't if you're you know at a point where what i'll often do is grind up the gems get to a point where it's maxed out close it get a whole bunch of offline gold come home open it reset to get a whole bunch of favor and then do it you know quickly get it back up you know get gems again and sort of repeat this process and it's a little bit like sort of, ten, you know, taking care of a plant, like my, my plant's over here, right? And it's like you water it, you check on it, right? You're tending it a little bit, and it grows over time. Uh, and in that way, it's not so much a game as more just like a, a thing to take care of, like, a, like a, a, a piece of your habit or routine that will, you know, take up like a minute or two minutes of your day, maybe every morning, every night, whenever um and give you some sort of reward for doing so but you know the thing i want to say is you probably don't want to play this because it's still a whole huge waste of time uh and you know i'm, I'm probably going to stop playing it at some point soon right i get bored of it and to do not spend any real money on this holy crap right. so i know i talked for a, a pretty scarily long time about a game where you do nothing but that shows you how much there is to this this do nothing game compared to the others uh and yeah so that is idle champions <laughs> the champions they're idle they're just doing nothing right that's idle champions of the forgotten realms uh it's free on steam or whatever it's still early access so it's a little bit broken and crashy as you saw uh enjoy it or not it's up to you